If you've been keeping an eye on the budget phone market, you've probably seen or heard of the Technos Pack 30C. It's Technos' latest attempt to pack some, I'll say, pretty decent features into an affordable device, but does it actually deliver? Well, that's what we're here to find out. I'm going to be walking you through my experience with the Technos Pack 30C. The good, the not so good, and everything in between. I'll talk about how it feels to use day to day and where it also needs some improvement. And if you're wondering how this compares to the older generation Technos Pack 20C, don't worry, we'll also get into that. Let me start by saying I think brands these days, especially for entry level or budget devices, just repackage the same phone from the previous year, maybe change one or two things like 120 Hz refresh rate, an extra number added to the battery and rename it which i think doesn't make any sense because a new model is supposed to have significant changes from its predecessor which hasn't been happening a lot lately anyways let's find out if the technos pack 30c is that entry level budget device you've been waiting for when it comes to design the technos pack 30c would definitely catch your eyes techno did step up their game in the looks department as far as i'm concerned i think they've done a better job so far for a budget device with this circular camera module the phone has a sleek modern look and also the circular camera design that has been circulating on budget phones lately. This looks good though it's not perfect but I think it's better than what we had on the Technos Pack 20C. It's definitely giving some flagship vibe. The build quality feels solid too with plastic frames and back, dual speakers, a side mounted fingerprint sensor and dual sim support. It also has a nice weight to it, not so heavy, lightweight and easy for your one handed use and the textured back adds some grip to it and smudges are not so noticeable. Now to the display, let's talk screen resolution. We are looking at a 6.67 inch 720p punch hole LCD with 120Hz refresh rate. The colors it displays are ok for an entry level device and it gets bright enough for outdoor use. Is it going to blow your mind? Probably not, but don't forget this is an entry level and a budget device, so you just have to keep your expectations low. But for scrolling through social media, watching a few videos on YouTube and binge watching your favorite shows, it does the job. For the refresh rate, I think it's become a norm for entry level devices to support a 120 hertz refresh rate. But when it comes to handling tasks, these devices barely go past 60 hertz, and that is exactly what happens here. This device runs on high OS based on Android 14 and is powered by a MediaTek G81 chipset which is definitely an upgrade from the MediaTek A series on the Spark 20C. This is an OK chipset for an entry level device. For everyday tasks like social media and light multitasking, it holds up well. But when it comes to heavy gaming and intense multitasking, you would definitely feel its limitations. The 4GB or 6GB of RAM helps keep things moving, but I did notice some apps reloading when I had a bunch open and some might even take a few more seconds to launch. Not a deal breaker, but you need to keep this at the back of your mind if you're a heavy user. And and I always suggest to go for one with a 6 gig of RAM for a better performance. The camera setup is pretty standard for this price range. There wasn't really any upgrade from its predecessor. It's still a single camera setup, a 50 megapixel main sensor on the rear alongside the IR blaster and a flash. Pictures on this device are just okay and something you would expect on an entry level device. Sometimes it takes a couple of multiple shots to get the right one as long as you have good lightning. Low light shots on the other hand wouldn't just do it for you. And an 8 megapixel selfie camera. It's there, it works, and that's just about it. The 5000 milliamp offers a decent battery life, and this depends on individual usage. You should be able to get at least 20 hours of screen time on moderate use. The only downside here is the 18 watt charging speed that should take around an hour and 30 minutes to get fully charged, but that shouldn't be much of an issue since you'll be charging maybe once a day. Techno also did include some of the AI features here. You get the LR assistant that will help you with some minor tasks, and I think it still needs a lot of improvement but it's a plus for this model considering it's an entry level device and a budget smartphone here. So what has really changed with the Technos Pack 30C over the Spark 20C? Well, I think it's more of an evolution than a revolution, hear me out. The design got a nice upgrade which is great and a slightly bigger screen which may or may not be a plus depending on individual preference. Also, the jump from a MediaTek A series to a MediaTek G81 chipset is noticeably better. The camera setup is similar but this time around we have the IR blaster feature and that also counts as an improvement over the Spark 20C. So here's my verdict. If you're on a budget and you need a phone that looks good 
with great battery and handles basic tax well. The Techno Spark 30 c is one of those devices you'd want to keep in mind, but if you're big on gaming, intense multitasking, or need top-notch camera performance, you might want to check out other options or even consider stretching your budget a bit. The Spark 30 c isn't perfect, but it gets the job done. And for 140,000 Naira and 160,000 Naira, this is what you'll be getting in the package. And that's it for this review. What do you think of the Techno Spark 30 c Drop your thoughts in the comments below and if you found this video helpful don't forget to like share subscribe and turn on post notification and i'll see you guys on the next one